With some more I mix Seven, eight, Clara and Caroline Nine and ten I'm at work again Da, 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 da But the girl I meet at twelve Oh my God, what a life Not a word to the wife Tick, tock, wind up the clock And I start my day over again Pum, pum <laughs> Hello, honey Hello, husband Your fellow's arriving? Yes, they're just coming in. Splendid. Have a drink. Thanks. Don't have too much water. It's rather strong today. I wonder what it is they put in the water. Some sort of disinfectant, I suppose. I'd rather have the microbes, wouldn't you? I would, yes. Cheer up. Cheer up. Excuse my sock, won't you? Certainly. <laughs> it's a nice looking sock. It is rather, isn't it? 
Guaranteed to keep the feet dry. The trouble is, it gets so wet doing it. Stanith, our speed, come and take over. He's looking after the men coming in. I'm awfully glad you've come. Why? I heard this was a quiet bit of line up here. Oh, quite. They simply blew us to bits yesterday. Too much damage? Awful. The dugout got blown up and came down at the men's tea. They were frightfully annoyed. <laughs> I know. There's nothing worse than dirt in your tea. By the way, what's happened to the big German attack? Yes. I'd forgotten about that. Are you here for six days? Yes. And I should think you'd get it right in the neck. Well, you won't be far away. Come on. Let's do this handing over. There you are. Uh, 500 Mills bombs, 34 gumboots. That's 17 pair. Oh, no. 25 right leg and 9 left. But everything's down there. It's quite all right. Well, I expect Stanner would like to see you before you go. How is the dear young boy? Drinking like a fish as usual? He's by far the best company commander we've got. Oh, he's a good chef, I know. I never did see a youngster put away the whiskey he does. Do you know, the last time out resting at the Lynn, he came to supper with us and drank a whole bottle in one hour, 14 minutes. We timed it. Do you know how long he's been out here? A good time, I know. Nearly three years. He came out here straight from school. Oh, I know he's a jolly good fellow. Because he's stuck it. If his nerves are all battered to bits, he's called a drunkard. You don't know him as I do. I love that fellow. I'd go to hell with him. Oh, you sweet, sentimental old darling. Come on, let's finish this handing over and stop blithering. There's nothing else to do. Oh, what about the logbook? Oh, God, you are a worker. <laughs> Here we are. Written right up to date. And here's my last entry. 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., all quiet. German airman flew over trenches, shot a red. Did he? No, I shot the red, you are. Come on, finish up your whiskey. I want to pack my mug. I'll leave that drop in the bottle. Plenty of water if you're thirsty. Thanks. Days. Don't forget to change your drawers if you get wet. <laughs> no, Papa. And don't forget about that big attack. Oh, Lord, no, I mustn't miss that. I'll make a note of it in my... There we are. Don't I look every inch a soldier? <laughs> I should get quite a fright if I were a German and met you coming round a corner. I should hope you would. <laughs> I shouldn't be able to run away for laughing. Don't be rude. Well, I'm damned. Still at it. What is? Why, that cock... It's been running round and round that candle ever since tea time. Must have done a mile. Did you ever have cockroach races? No. Oh, great fun. We've had them every evening. What are the rules? Well, you each have a cockroach, and you start them. In line, here. Here. Now, on the word go, you dig your cockroach in the ribs, and you stare him with a match across the table. I won ten francs last night. Had a splendid cockroach. A little black chap. You find him dashing about here somewhere. I'll give you a tip. Yes. Swear you won't tell a soul? Yes. Well, if you want to get the best pace out of your cockroach, dip it in whiskey. Make some go like hell. <laughs> right. Thanks awfully. Well, I must be off. Cheerio. Cheerio. That's one and two. I'm with more than two. Excuse me, sir. Can I lay supper? Yes, do. Thank you, sir. What are you going to tempt us with tonight, Mason? Soup, sir, cutlets and pineapple. Cutlets? Yes, sir, cutlets. What sort of cutlets? Well, sir, I don't like to commit myself too deep. Ordinary ration meat. Yes, sir, ordinary ration meat. 
but a new shape. Smells like liver, but it hasn't got that smooth, wet look what liver's got, sir. Officer? Yes. Good. We've been expecting you. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. I should take your pack off. Oh, right. Have a drink? Uh, well... You don't drink whiskey? Oh, yes. Just a small one, sir. Whiskey takes away the taste of the water. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the water takes away the taste of the whiskey. Just out from England? Yes, I landed a week ago. The line? Yes. Well, here's luck, sir. Good luck. <laughs> Cigarette? Thanks. Ever been up in the line before? Oh, no. You see, I only got out of school at the end of last summer term. Expect you find it a bit strange. Yes, I do a bit. My name's Osborne. I'm second in command of the company. You only call me sir in front of the men. I see, thanks. You'll find the other officers call me uncle. Oh, yes. What's your name? Rally. Rally. Captain Stanhop commands the company. I know. It's a frightful bit of luck. Why? Do you know him? <laughs> Rather. We were at school together. At least, of course. I was only a kid. He was one of the big fellows. He's three years older than I am. So you're at school with Stanhope. I wonder if he'll remember you. I expect you've grown in the last three years. Oh, I think he'll remember me. <laughs> He's a fine company commander. Isn't he? I expect Dennis will be frightfully surprised to see me. I've got a message for him. From the general? No, from my sister. Your sister? Yes. You see, Dennis used to stay with us, and naturally my sister. Well, perhaps I ought not. Oh, that's all right. I didn't actually know that Stanhope was... Uh... Oh, they're not officially engaged. No? She'll be awfully glad I'm here with him. I can write and tell her all about him. He doesn't say much in his letters. Can we write often? Oh, yes. <laughs> letters are collected every day. Good. You say it's a long time since you last saw him. Well, nearly a year ago. You know, Raleigh, you mustn't expect to find him quite the same. Oh? You may find he's uh, a bit quick-tempered. Oh, I know old Dennis's temper. <laughs> you must remember he's commanded this company for a long time. It's a big strain on a man. Oh, it must be. So if you notice a difference in Stanhope, you'll know it's only the strain. I see. Now, let's see. I expect you'll sleep in the other dug out there. Oh, right -o. We never undress in the line. You can take your boots off now and then in the daytime, but it's better to keep pretty well dressed always. I see, thanks. I expect we shall each do about three hours duty at a time, and then six off. I see. Are we in the front line here? No. That's the support line out there. The front line's about 50 yards further on, to the left. How frightfully quiet it is. Yes. It's often quiet like this. I thought there'd be an awful row here all the time. Most people think that.
I expect it all seems very strange to you. Well, it's not exactly what I thought. It's, it's just this quiet that seems so funny. Yeah, about a hundred yards from here, the Germans are sitting in their dugouts, thinking how quiet it is. Are they as near as that? About a hundred yards. It seems uncanny. Makes me feel uh, we're all just waiting for something. You thought it was fighting all the time? Well, yes, in a way. Can you tell me where number two platoon is, sir? Yes, in the big dugout. Thank you, sir. Did you come up by trench tonight or over the top? By trench. An amazing trench. Turning and twisting for miles over a sort of plain. There's something rather romantic about it all. Yes, I thought that too. Always think of it that way if you can. Think of it all as romantic. It helps. You mind your home building business? What's that? Me mind mind. Sounds like the big attack. Around. Come on, Raddy. What's the matter, Mason? Let me get at him. I'll smash his head in. What's the matter, Mason? Matter? Let me get at him or I'll strangle him so help me. Why, what's happened? Happened? You know that dinner pineapple chunks I got, sir? Yes. Well, I'm sorry to say the apricots. <laughs> Good heavens. Must have given you a turn. I distinctly said pineapple chunks at the canteen, sir. Wasn't there a label on the tin? No, sir. I pointed that out to the man. I said, was he certain it was pineapple chunks? And I suppose he said he was. Yes, sir. He said a leopard can't change his spots. <laughs> what have leopards got to do with pineapple? That's just what I thought, sir. Made me think there was something fishy about it. You see, sir, I know the captain can't stand the sight of apricots. He said to me the next time we had him, he'd wring my blooming neck, sir. <laughs> well, haven't you anything else? Well, there's this pink blancmange I've made, sir. But it ain't anywhere near stiff yet. Never mind, Mason. We must have the apricots and chance it. Only I thought I'd tell you, sir, so as the captain won't blame me. That's all right, Mason. Very good, sir. This is Mr. Riley, Mason. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You understand how it is, sir, don't you? Oh, I distinctly said pineapple chunks at the yes. canteen, and he told me not... Yes, Mason. It's all right. Sir. Very good. Sir. Out on the right. well, that sounds like stand up now. Has Hardy gone? Yes, he cleared out a few minutes ago. Well, lucky for him he did. I had a few words to say to Master Hardy. You never saw such a mess as fellas at the trenches in. Dugouts smell like cesspits. Damp bombs, rusty rifle grenades. It's perfectly foul. Where are the servants? In there. Mason? Coming, sir. Just bring me the soup, sir. Oh, damn the soup. Bring some whiskey. Here's a new officer, Stanup. Just arrived. Oh, sorry. Couldn't see you in this miserable life. Hello, Stanup. How did you get here? Well, I was told to report to your company, Stanup. I see. Rather a coincidence, isn't it? Yes. I'm awfully glad to be in your company, Stanup. Well, come and sit here beside me, Uncle. You'd better sit there, Eddie. Right, oh. You rally? Yes. I'm Trotter. Oh, yes? How are you? All right, thanks. Been out here before? No. Feel a bit odd, I suppose. <laughs> Does a bit. Oh, well, you'll soon get used to it. You know, you feel you've been out here a year in about an hour's time. <laughs> what sort of soup is this, Mason? It's yellow soup, sir. It has a very deep yellow flavor. It needs some pepper. Bring some pepper, Mason. I'm very sorry, sir. When the mess box was packed, the pepper was omitted. Oh, I say, but damn it. Well, we must have pepper. It's a disinfectant. You must have pepper in soup. Why wasn't it packed, Mason? Well, sir, I left it to Irvin. Then I advise you never to leave it to anyone else again, unless you want to rejoin your platoon in the line. Go and fetch some. Right, sir. I send over to pinch it off Sergeant Cox. Unbeknown. 
I mean, after all, war's bad enough with pepper. But with that pepper, it's blooming awful. What's it like outside? Quiet as an empty house. I wish we knew more what's going on. So do I. Still, me wife reads the papers every morning and writes and tells me the news. What's this? It's meat, sir. I know that. What sort? Sort of cutlet, sir. Sort of cutlet, is it? You know, Mason, there's cutlets and cutlets. I know, sir, but that one's a cutlet. Well, it won't let me cut it. No, sir. That's a joke. Oh, right, sir. You'd better go out and have a look at that ruin tonight. Trotter goes on duty as soon as he's finished supper. You better go with him to learn. Right. Look here, Skipper. It's nearly eight now. Couldn't we make it half fast? No. Well, boys, here we are again for six days. Six blooming eternal days. That's uh, 144 hours. That's 8,680 minutes. That doesn't sound so bad. We've done 20 of them already. Well, it's five to eight now. You'd better go and relieve Hibbert. I haven't had my apricots yet. We'll keep your apricots till you come back. I never saw anything like a war for upsetting meals. That's because you never stop eating. Well, anyhow, let's have some coffee. Hi, Mason. Coffee. Coming, sir. Well, I'll get dressed. <sighs> come on, Larry. Right. Just wear your belt with your revolver case on it. Must have your revolver to shoot rats. And your tin hat. Oh, you don't need your walking stick. It gets in your way if you have to run fast. Do you have to run fast? Oh, Lord, yes, often. When you see a mini coming. That's a big trench mortar shell. Short for mini worker. When they come over, you've got to dodge and run like hell sometimes. Coffee, sir? Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Hey, Mason, I might leave my apricots out. Put them on a separate plate and put them in there. Very good, sir. If you leave them in here, you never know what might happen to them. No, sir. B Company on our right, aren't they, Skipper? Yes. There's 50 yards of undefended area between. You'd better patrol that a good deal. Right, Al. And have a look at that Lewis gun position on the left. Right. You don't want me to go out and look at that blinking ruin, do you? No, nope. I'll see to that. Good. I don't fancy crawling about on my belly after that cutlet. Ah. Well, come on, me lad. Let's go and see about this here war. Hey, try and keep your face out of the mud. Oh, damn. You've got to watch owls. Owls everywhere, but you'll get used to them. Yes. Hello, hello. Who's this? It's me, sir. Hello, George. I didn't recognize you for a minute. No, sir. How's the view, George? I can't see anything, sir. How much are you charging for a look at the eclipse? <laughs> well, anyhow, let's have a look. Here, boy, is a periscope. Come and get your pennies worth. How does it look to you, Rally? It does look a bit strange. That's just what I say. Needs a bit of gardening, that's what. Well, come along, my lad. I'll show you the sight. Will you take apricots, sir? No, thanks, Mason. I'm very sorry about them fine apples being apricots. I explained to Mr. Osborne. That's all right, Mason. Thanks. All right. Very good, sir. Why don't you turn in and get some sleep? Sleep? I can't sleep. Well, Hibbert? Everything's fairly quiet. There's a bit of sniping on the left and rifle grenades on the right. I see. Mason's got your supper for you. Well, I... I don't think I can manage any supper tonight, Stannard. 
This beastly neuralgia seems to be right inside this eye. Beastly pain gets worse every day. Some hot soup and a good tough chop will put that right. I'm afraid the pain rather takes my appetite away. Try and forget about it. Well, I, I wish I could. Well, get tight. No, I, I think I'll turn in for some rest. All right, turn in. You go on duty at two, I'll leave you at four. I'll tell Mason to call you. All right. Thanks, Denham. Cheer up. Cheer up. Can I have a candle? There you are. Thanks. Another little worm trying to wriggle home. Oh, I think he's tried hard. How long has he been out here? Three months, I suppose. Now he's decided he's done his bit. Well, he's mistaken. I let Warren get away like that. No more. I don't see how you can prevent a fellow going sick. I'll have a word with the doctor before he does. Thinks he's going to wriggle home before the attack. We'll just see about that. Raleigh seems a nice chap. Yes. At school with you, wasn't he? Has he been talking already? He just mentioned it. He seems to think a lot of you. I'm his hero. It's quite natural. I wonder. How many battalions are there in France, Uncle? Why? We'll say 50 divisions. That's 1,800 companies. Rarely might have been sent to any one of those. God, he comes to mind. I haven't shown you that, have I? No. Raleigh's sister, isn't it? How do you know? Strong likeness. She's an awfully nice looking girl. I don't know. A photo doesn't show much really, you know. Just a face. I don't know why I keep it, really. Why, isn't she? I thought so. Well, what do you think? I thought perhaps she was waiting for you. Yes, she's waiting for me and she doesn't know. She thinks I'm a fine fellow, commanding a company. She doesn't know if I went up those steps into the front line without being doped with whiskey. I'd go mad with fright. Now look here, old chap. It's time you went home for a rest. It's due to you. You suggest I go sick? You rails her in the eye, eh? I didn't even go home on my last leave. In case she'd find out. And now her brother has to turn up. It's not as bad as that. But I've just told you. That boy's a hero worshipper. Damn it, Uncle. You're a schoolmaster, you know? Yes. Raleigh's father knew mine. His people asked me to stay with them one summer. I met his sister then. Yes? First I thought of her just as another kid like Raleigh. It wasn't until just before I came out here for the first time that I realized what a topping girl she really is. Funny how you realize things suddenly, isn't it, Uncle? You know, I just prayed to come through this war and do things and keep absolutely fit for her. Well, you've done pretty well. An MC and the company. Oh, it was all right at first. It was when I came back here. After that awful affair on Vimy Ridge. Realized I'd go mad if I didn't break the strain. Couldn't bear to be fully conscious all the time. You felt like that, Uncle, haven't you? Yes, often. Well, there are only two ways of breaking the strain. One was to go home and pretend you were ill. 
The other was this. Which would you pick, Uncle? I don't know yet. It's a slimy thing to go home if you're not really ill, isn't it? I think so. Well, cheer up, then. And long live the men who go home with neuralgia. When the war's over and the strain's gone, you'll be as fit as ever at your age. I hoped that all along. Go away for months, live in the open, get fit, and then go back to her. And so you can. If Frayley had gone to one of those other 1,800 companies... But I don't see why you oh, for the Lord's sake, Uncle, don't be a damn fool. You know. You know he'll write home and tell her I reek of whiskey all day. He's very young. He's got hundreds of strange things to learn. He'll realize that men are different out here. It's no good, Uncle. Didn't you see him at supper, sitting there, staring at me and wondering? He's out in those trenches now, still wondering and beginning to understand. I believe Rally will go on liking you. Oh, you do, do you? You know, Uncle, I'm captain of this company. Well, what does that little prig of a boy matter, eh? Little prig, that's what he is. Thinks he's going to write home and tell Madge all about me. Well, he won't. You see, Uncle, he won't write. Censorship. I censor his letters. Cross out all he says about me. You can't read his letters. Cross out all he says about men. We all go west in the big attack. And she goes on thinking I'm a fine fella. Forever. And ever. Come on, O.J. Come and lie down over here. Did I ask him to force his way into my company? Go away. What are you trying to do? Come and lie down and go to sleep. Go to sleep yourself. I sent her his letters, you see, Uncle? Right, oh. Now, come on. Come and lie down and go to sleep. You've had a hard day of it. Oh, where's Hardy? Did you say he'd gone? Yes, he's gone. He would go, the lazy swine. Wanna tell him to keep those trenches clean? We'll clean them up tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> General Uncle, clean trenches up with a little dustpan and broom, eh? Uh, make your little white apron with a lace on it. Yes, that'll be fine. <laughs> Come on. Come and lie down. I'll see you get called at two o'clock. You must be tired. Got it. I'm damn tired. Feel sick? You'll be all right in a minute. Come on. Down you go. There, how's that? Comfortable? Yes. Comfortable. Dear old uncle, tuck me up. There you are. Kiss me, uncle. <laughs> Kiss you, be hanged. You go to sleep. All right, I go to sleep. Mason. Yes, sir? Will you call me at 10 minutes to 11? I'm going to turn in for a while. Very good, sir. The peppers come, sir. Yeah, good. I'm very sorry about the pepper, sir. That's all right, Mason. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Rats. Did you get him? Yes, but kicking does no good. It only makes them malicious. So many rats. What on earth do they live on? 
Whatever they can get. Oh. I wish I'd saved that cutlet to give them. Might have done a few in. How long have we been up? About two hours, 56 minutes, and... Hello, my second hand's broke. We go down soon. Three minutes' time. It does seem long. I suppose it's because everything's so quiet. Hello, Uncle. Have a nice nap? Very pleasant, thanks. What's new? Nothing. It's quiet. All right, Rally? Yes, thanks. All right. He's a blooming veteran, aren't you, Rally? Oh. Now go down and take a nap. Go quietly. Stand up to sleep. All right, oh. If I can be of any use, sir, I'd be glad to stay up longer. Nonsense. You go get some sleep. All right, oh. Uh. Pepper's come. He does? Good. Hello, Stano. Uncle said you were asleep. Did he? Well, I'm not. Better go to bed, Rally. Good night, Stano. Am I very drunk, Toller? Oh, there you are. Hello? <coughs> Cold? No. Just thinking. Lovely morning, isn't it? Beautiful, so far. The Colonel's here. Who oh, is he? Yes, he's out in the sap. He wants to see you. Right. You better go and get your breakfast. How about the wire? I'll see to that. Come up as soon as you've finished. Right, out. Oh, good morning, stand up. Morning, sir. It's been quiet, hasn't it? Very, sir. The big attack's coming soon. Looks like it. B Company got a German prisoner last night. Oh? Did they get anything out of him? He gave the date of the attack as the 21st. 21st? That's the day after tomorrow? Yes. Hmm. Probably at dawn. Very probably. When it does come, you mustn't expect too much support from behind. Very good, sir. You'll just have to stay here as long as you can. Right, sir. You better see about getting that wire strengthened. Right, sir. Have you got plenty of ammunition? Yes, sir. Right. Cheerio. Cheerio, sir. What a lovely smell of bacon. Yes, sir, I reckon there's enough smell of bacon here to last for dinner. Well, there's nothing like a good fat bacon rasher when you're as empty as I am. I'm glad you like it fat, sir. Well, I like a bit of lean, too. There was a bit of lean in the middle of yours, but it kind of shrunk up in the cooking, sir. Bad cooking, that's all. Any porridge? Yes, sir, there's porridge. Lumpy, I suppose. Yes, sir, quite nice and lumpy. Well, take the lumps out of mine. Just bring you the gravy. Very good, sir. Do you know? Mason's getting familiar. He's not a bad cook. And I say, do you realize he's washed his dishcloth? I know. I told him about it. <laughs> Did you really? You have got some pluck. <laughs> I've took the lumps out, sir. Good. Keep them and use them for dumplings next time we have boiled beef. Very good, sir. I thought you were on duty now. I'm supposed to be. Stanhope sent me down to get me breakfast. He's looking after things till I finish. Uh, he's got a long job, though. Oh, no, I'm a quick eater. I'm Mason, Bacon. Coming, sir. It's a wonderful morning. Lovely, I did. Makes you feel sort of young and hopeful. Oh, that looks all right. 
If you look down straight only from above, sir, you can see the middle lean quite clear. Good Lord, yes. That's it, isn't it? No, sir. That's a bit of rust off the pan. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. You've got it, sir. <laughs> Throw us a chunk of bread, Uncle. How are things going up there? I don't like the look of things a bit. You mean the quiet? Too damn quiet. You can bet your boots the Bosch is up to something. The big attack soon, I reckon. I don't like it, Uncle. Pass the jam. It's strawberry. Oh, is it? I'm glad you got rid of that raspberry jam. Can't stand raspberry jam. Peps get behind your plate. <laughs> Dad have done anything about the wire? He's looking after it now. My goodness, Uncle. Doesn't he look ill? Yes. I'm afraid he's not well. Look at the sun. It'll be quite warm soon. Mm, lovely, ain't it? Hope we have hot summer. So do I. Funny about it being summer out here, too. Makes me think of my garden of an evening. Walking around in me slippers after supper. Smoking me pipe. Are you keen on gardening? Had some fine hollyhocks. One year I had one eight feet high. Did you really? Took a photo of it. Would you like to see it? I should. Here. Ah. Now you see that there? Yes. That's the roof of the summer house. Is it really? Just shows the height of the hollyhock. So it does. Beauty, isn't it? Rather. They'll be coming out again soon if they have this sun at home. I reckon they will. Uh... I remember one morning last spring, we were coming out of the salient. It was about the time the Bosch was sending over that, uh, that gas that smells like, uh, uh, like pear drops, you know. I know, phosgene. Phosgene, that's it. We were all scared to well of it. And all of a sudden, we smelt that funny sweet smell. And a fella shouted gas, and we all put on our masks. And then I spotted what it was. What was it? Why, a blinking may tree. All out in full bloom and growing beside the path. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we felt like a lot of silly boobs putting on gas masks because of a damn may tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I must get my fat down. <laughs> well, I'll go and relieve Stano. He'll curse like hell if I don't. I'll bet he's got a red hot liver this morning. Well, cheer up. Cheer up. What do you think about it all? Oh, all right. I feel as if I'd been here ages. I expect you do. <laughs> time passes, though. Are we here for six days? Yes. Seems a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, rather. I can't imagine the end of six days here. How did you feel in the front line? Oh, quite all right. Everything's so frightfully quiet. Everybody talking in low voices. I suppose you've got to talk quietly when you're so near the German front line. About 70 yards, isn't it? Yes. About the breadth of a rugger field. Oh, it's funny to think of it like that. I always measure distances like that out here. Keeps them in proportion. Did you play rugger? Yes. Mostly refing at school in the last few years. You were schoolmaster then? Yes. I must apologize. Oh, I don't mind schoolmasters. Well, I mean, I mean, I've never met one outside of school before. <laughs> they do get out sometimes. <laughs> Who did you play for? The Harlequins. I say, really? I played for the English team on one great occasion. What, England? Yeah, I was awfully lucky to get the chance. Long time ago now. <laughs> I say, the Germans really are quite decent, aren't they? I mean... I remember up at Wipers. One of our men on patrol got shot just about dawn. That night, three of our fellows crawled out to bring him in. It was so near the German trenches, they could have shot our fellows down one by one. When they started to drag the wounded man back over the broken ground, a big German officer stood up in their trenches and cried out, Carry him! And our men stood up and carried him back. And the German officer fired some lights for him to see by. And the next day, we blew each other's trenches to blazes. <laughs> it all seems rather silly, doesn't it? Yes, 
It does, rather. I started a letter when I came off duty last night. How does one send letters? Quartermaster Sergeant takes them down after he's brought up rations in the evening. I think I'll go and finish it now. I do. Hello, Snap. What a foul smell of bacon. Yeah, we got bacon for breakfast. <laughs> so I gathered. Would you like a nice bit of bacon, sir? No, thanks. Bring me a cup of tea. Very good, sir. Would you like a nice bit of sardine, sir? I should loathe it. Very good, sir. Sardines. Mason's got no imagination. I don't suppose he has. Funny not to have any imagination. Must be rather nice. Rather dull, I should think. I suppose all his life, Mason feels like you and I do, when we're drowsily drunk. Poor chap. I suppose if Mason were to look at that wall there, uh, he'd just see a brown surface. He wouldn't see the earth beyond. The worms wandering about among the stones and the roots of trees. I wonder how a worm knows when it's going up or down. I expect when it's going down, the blood runs to its head and makes it throb. <laughs> worms haven't got any blood. I don't suppose it ever does, no. Rotten if it didn't. Went on going down and thought it was coming up. Yeah. I expect that's the one thing worms dread. <laughs> I suppose if Mason were to look up at the sky at night, He'd just see the stars. He wouldn't see the space beyond the stars. That makes you sick and giddy and want to cling on to something. Do you think this life sharpens the imagination? Must do. I was looking across at the Bosch trenches and right beyond. Not a sound or a soul. Just an enormous plain all churned up like a sea that's got muddier and muddier till it's so stiff it can't move. You could have heard a pin drop in the quiet. Yet you knew that thousands of guns were hidden there, already oiled and clean. Millions of bullets lying in the pouches. Thousands of Germans all watching, waiting, thinking. And gradually that feeling came over me. Yes, I know. Whenever I look at anything nowadays, I seem to see right through it. Looking at you now, there's your uniform, jersey, shirt, vest, your chest, and beyond that... Yes, uh, leave it at that. <laughs> you don't think I'm going potty, do you? Good Lord, no. A bit of nerve strain, that's all. Well, that's all right, then. Mason, yes, sir? bring some mugs and a bottle of whiskey. Yes, sir. So early in the morning? Just a spot. It's damn cold here. Sure, the Hippodrome's been running a long time. Zigzag. Harper saw it in his last leave. Says it's damn good. Wish I'd seen a show on leave. You mean to say you haven't been to any shows? No. I spend most of the time in the garden. In the evenings, I used to sit and read and smoke my pipe a bit. My wife used to play the piano. We forgot there was a war. Till my two youngsters made me play at soldiers with them on the floor. <laughs> Poor old uncle. Can't get away from me, can you? Are you going to have one? No, not now, thanks. Where's Rally? Finishing a letter. Did you tell him? About what? Censorship. Good Lord, you don't mean that seriously. Mean it? Of course I mean it. But you can't read his letters. I'm supposed to read all your letters. Tell me, Dunkle, imagine yourself in my place. Imagine a letter going away from here, from that boy. He'll say nothing rotten about you. Oh, you think so? You should have seen him last night when he came in with Trotter and looked at me. I was sitting here, having a drink. He looked at me as if I'd hit him between the eyes, as if I'd spat at him. You imagine things. Imagine things. There's no need to imagine. Well, why can't you treat him like any other youngster? Oh, sorry. It's all right, Rally. Going to inspect rifles? Yes. 
You needn't bother if the woodwork's a bit dirty. Just the barrels, magazines, and all the metal parts. Oh, right, oh. See, there's plenty of oil on them. Look at the ammunition in the men's pouches. Right. Where do we put letters to be collected? Just leave them on the table. Oh, right. You leave it open. Open? Yes. I have to censor all letters. Oh, but I haven't said anything about where we are. It's the rule that all letters must be read. Oh, I, I didn't realize that. I'll just leave it then. Give me that letter. But, Dennis, give me that letter. But it's private. I didn't know. You that. understand an order? Give me that letter. But I tell you, there's nothing. Dennis, don't Dennis me. Scarab's my name. You're not at school now. Don't inspect your rifles. Do you understand an order? Look, your husband. I'm commanding this company. Very well. Ada, I don't want to read the thing. You let it go, then. I don't care. Shall I glance through it for you? If you like it. I don't want to. You'd better. I can't. You want to hear? I suppose I better know. He starts off with a description of his getting here. Doesn't mention the names of any places. What does he say then? The next bit's about you. Go on. He says, and now I come to the great news. I was told to report to C Company, Captain Stanhope, and was taken along some trenches and shown the dugout. There's an awfully nice officer there, quite old, with grey hair. <laughs> then a little later, Dennis came in. He looked tired, but that's because he worked so frightfully hard. Then I went on duty in the front lines, and the sergeant told me all about Dennis. He said that Dennis is the finest officer in the battalion. The men simply love him. He makes them keen about things, like he did the kids at school. I'm awfully proud to think he's my friend. That's all. Shall I stick it down? Yes, please. Corporal Bird said you wanted to see me, sir. I want to talk to Major. Yes, sir. Now look here. We must expect this attack on Thursday morning at dawn. That's the second dawn from now. Thursday morning. Very good, sir. We're to hold these trenches and no man's to move from here. I see, sir. Now it may happen that the companies on our sides will give way, leaving our flanks exposed. So I want a belt of wire put on both our flanks to meet the wire in the support line. Both flanks? Yes, sir. When the attack begins, I'll take charge from the left, Mr. Osborne on the right. You'll be with Mr. Osborne. I see, sir. Is there anything you're not clear about? Seems all clear to me, sir. Anything you want to know? Well, sir, when the attack comes, of course we beat them off. But what if they keep on attacking? We keep on beating them off. But oughtn't we to fix something up about falling back, sir? There's no need to. You see, we should be able to fire into the Bosch as they try and get through the gaps on our sides. We'll make the hell of a mess of them. Yes, sir. But what happens when the Bosch has all got round the back of us? Then we advance and win the war. Win the war? I see, sir. Hello. 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 Anything else, sir? I don't think so, thanks. Very good, sir. Hello. What is it? Oh, here you are. Colonel's down below. Wants to see you. Now go right down. Hello, sir. Hello, Thanop. Lovely day. Splendid, sir. I'm glad we're alone, Thanop. I've got some rather serious news. 
I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Have a drink. Why, well, thanks. Just a spot. Here's luck. Cheer up. What is the news? The brigade was up to see me this morning. It seems the Bosch began relieving his frontline troops yesterday. And the general wants us to make a raid. To see who's come into the line opposite here. I see. When? As soon as possible. He said tonight. That's absurd. I told him so. I said the earliest would be tomorrow afternoon. A surprise daylight raid under a smoke screen from the trench mortars. I'd suggest sending two officers and ten men. Tonight, the trench mortars can blow a hole in the Bosch wire, and you can cut a hole in yours. Very good, sir. I'll leave you to select the men, Stanhope. You want me to go with the men? Oh, no, Stanhope. No, I couldn't let you go. Whom do you suggest? I'd suggest Osborne for one. He's a very level-headed chap. He can direct it. And who else? What about that youngster I sent up to you last night? What, really, sir? Yes, just the type. Plenty of guts. But he's awfully new to it all. That's all to the good. His nerves are sound. Very good, sir. Right. Then I'll be up and see Osborne and Raleigh the first thing tomorrow morning. Right, sir. It's all a damn nuisance, but after all, it's necessary. I suppose it is. Well, cheer up, Stanhope. Cheer up, sir. I wanted a word with you, Stanhop. Far away. Well, this neuralgia of mine, I'm awfully sorry, I'm afraid I can't stick it any longer. I know. Rotten, isn't it? I've got it like hell. You have? Had it for weeks. Well, I'm sorry, Stanhop, but I can't help it. I've tried damned hard, but I must go down. Go down? Where? I might go sick. Go down the line. I must go into hospital and have some kind of treatment. I'll go right along now, I think. You're going to stay here? I'm going down to see the doctor. He'll send me to hospital when he understands. I've seen the doctor. I saw him this morning. He won't send you to hospital, Hibbert. He'll send you back here. So you can save yourself a walk. What the hell, oh, Dad? I've a perfect right to go sick if I want to. The men can, why can't an officer? There's nothing the matter with you, Hibbert. The German attacks on Thursday, almost for certain. You're going to stay here and see it through with the rest of us. I tell you, I can't. The pain's nearly sending me mad. I'm going. I'm going now. You can't stop me. Stella. You're going to stay here and do your job. Haven't I told you I can't? Let me get by. Now look here, Hibbert. Once and for all, you're going to stay here and see through with the rest of us. I shall die of this pain if I don't go. Better die of the pain than be shot for deserting. What do you mean? You know what I mean. I've a right to see a doctor. Don't you understand? He'll only send you back here. Dr. Preston's never let a shirker past him yet. He's not going to start now, two days before the attack. Stand up, if only you knew how awful I feel. Do please let me get by. Let me, please. Apart, you little swine. Let me go. If you did, I'll have you shot for deserting. I'd rather spare you the disgrace. I'll give you a half a minute to decide. Either you stay here and try and be a man, or you try and get through that door there to desert. And if you do that, there's going to be an accident, you understand? I'm fiddling with my revolver, cleaning it, you see, and it's going off by accident. It often happens out here. It's going off and it's going to shoot you between the eyes. You don't. I'll give you half a minute to decide. Half a minute from now. Go on then, shoot! You are never going to hospital and I swear I'll never go in those trenches again. Shoot and thank God! Fifteen more seconds. Go on, I'm ready! <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Five. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Good. 
good man, Hibbert. I like the way you stuck there. Why didn't you shoot? Go on. Stay here and see through with the rest of us. <laughs> Dan, if I've tried like hell, I swear I have. Ever since I came out here, I've hated and loathed it. Every sound up there makes me feel all cold and sick. I'm, I'm different from the others, you don't understand. <laughs> I'll never go up in those awful trenches again, with the men looking at me and knowing I'd rather die here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Try a drop of this. No, thanks. Go on, man, drink it. <laughs> I know how you feel, Hibbert. I've known all along. How can you know? Because I feel the same, exactly the same. Every little noise out there makes me feel just as you feel. Why couldn't you tell me instead of talking about neuralgia? I can't bear to go in those awful trenches again. When are you due to go on again? Quite soon, at four. Well, shall we go on together? We both know how we feel now. Shall we see if we can stick it together? I can't! Well, supposing the worst happened and you got knocked right out? Well, think of all the topping fellows who've gone already. Can't be very lonely there with all those fellows. Sometimes I feel it's lonelier here. Go on. Go and have a good rest and we go out together, eh? Stand up, do please let me go. If you did, could you ever look a decent man again in the face in all your life? You might get wounded. Then you can go home and feel proud. And if you're killed, you won't have to stand this hell anymore. Go on. See it through, old man. Why, it's... It's the only decent thing a man can do. What about it? I'll try. Good man. Look, you, you won't say anything about this to the others, Sam? If you promise not to tell anyone what a blasted rotter I am. God, no. That's right. Now, you go up and have a smoke and a rest for ten minutes, and we go up together and hold each other's hands and jump every time a rat squeaks. Right. I mean to pull through, don't you? Yes, rather. Awfully decent of you, Stella. Thanks, most awfully. That's enough. all right. Would you like a nice cup of tea, sir? Can you guarantee it's nice? Well, sir, it's a little bit oniony, but that's only because of the saucepan. In other words, it's onion soup with tea leaves in it. Not for dinner time, sir. All right, Mason, bring two cups of onion tea. One for Mr. Hibbert. Very good, sir. Would you like a nice cup of tea, sir? Yes, please, Mason. Plenty of bread and butter, strawberry jam. Very good, sir. Hello, Uncle. How are things up there? Very little doing. The Colonel's been talking to me. Huh? About the attack? Partly. We've got to make a raid, Uncle. Oh? When? Tomorrow afternoon, under a smoke screen. Two officers, ten men. I see. Who's going? You and Raleigh. Oh. Why rally? Colonel picked you to direct, rally to dash in. I see. But the Brigadier wants to know what's opposite here. Tomorrow. 
What time? I suggest five o'clock, a little before dusk. I see. I'm damn sorry. It's all right, old man. Will you fix up the men who are to go? I'll go and see the sergeant major now and get him to go around for names. Well, I shan't be long, Uncle. Tea ready? Yes. Oh, Lord, I do feel frazzy. Had a fine sleep, though. Bread's just come in, sir. Here's the strawberry jam. Tell me, Mother, what is that that looks like strawberry jam? Hush, hush, my dear. It is only Pa ran over by a tram. Doesn't this tea taste of onions? Yes, it does a bit. Pity Mason doesn't wash his pots better. Mason, this tea tastes of onions. I'm very sorry, sir. Onions do have such a way of cropping up again. But we haven't had onions for days. I know, sir. That's what makes it so funny. What are you reading? Just a book. What's the title? Ever read it? Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Well, that's a kid's book. Yes. You aren't reading it. Yes. What, a kid's book? Haven't you read it? No. You ought to. How doth a little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale? How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly spread his claws, and welcomes little fishes in with gently smiling jaws. I don't see no point in that. Exactly. That's just the point. You are a funny fella. Why Zibbert got his tea in there? I don't know. Can't understand that little fella, can you? Who? Why Zibbert? You ought to see his eyes, all red. He told me in there he'd got hay fever. Rotten thing, hay fever. If you ask me, he's been crying. Has he? I say, old chap, do you mind? I, I just want to get a letter off. Oh, sorry. They haven't collected the letters yet, then? No, not yet. I'll get one off to my old lady. She's wrote and asked me if I've got fleas. <laughs> Have you? I wish it was fleas. I say, Alex told me about the raid. Has he? Just you and I, isn't it, and ten men? Yes, tomorrow, just about dusk. How exciting. Were you and I picked specially? Yes. I say. You chaps got the wire cutters? Yes, we're all right. There's a covering party out in front. I know. I want to ask him to keep that blooming machine gun quiet while we're out. Right. Come on, boys, have you come. we got to cut a good big hole in the wire for our fellas to crawl through on the raid tomorrow night. Come on, boys, over you go. Come on. Come over on. you go, boys. Come on, let's go. Come on, boys. Quiet. Let's go. Shut up. Yes, sir. The men are standing by at three minutes, too. Good. Mason? Coming, sir. 
Men having their rum, Uncle? Just as we left. Gives it a quarter of an hour to soak in. Are they cheerful? They're all right, sir. Will you go up and speak to them, sir? Don't you think the men would rather be left alone? I think they'd appreciate a word or two. Oh, all right, if you think they would. Are you coming, Stanhope? Yes, sir. I'll come. Well, good luck, Osborne. I'm sure you'll put up a good show. Thank you, sir. And rally, just dash in like blazes. Grab hold of the first boss you see and bundle him back across here. Right, sir. Remember, a great deal may depend on your bringing back a German. You never know. Well, good luck to both of you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Don't forget to empty your pockets of papers and things. Uh, Stan. Hello? Just a moment. I say, don't think I'm being morbid or anything like that. But would you mind taking these? Sure. Till you come back, old chap. No, it's only just in case. If anything should happen, you might send them to my wife. You'll come back all right. What on earth should I do without you? <laughs> Goodness knows. I must have somebody to tuck me up in bed. <laughs> well, see you in the trench later on. Right-o. Have a spot of rum in that coffee before you go. Cheer up. Cheer up. Just time for a small pipe. Good, I'll have a cigarette, I think. Here you are. Oh, I say, I'm always smoking yours. That's all right. What about this coffee? Sure. How do you feel? Oh, all right. I've got a sort of an empty feeling inside. That's just what I've got. Wind up? I keep wanting to yawn. It'll pass off as soon as we start. I wish we could go now. Got eight minutes yet. Oh, Lord. Let's just have a last look at the map. Now, here we are. When the smoke's thick enough, I'll give the signal. You make straight for that point there. When I get to the Bosch wire, I lie down and wait for you. Don't forget to throw your bombs. No, I've got them here. And I shout right-o. In you go with your eight men. Right-o. Then we come back like blazes. The whole thing will be over quite quickly. I think so. Now let's forget all about it for six minutes. Oh, Lord, I can't. You must. I say, how topping if we get a German? Yes. Your coffee sweet enough? Yes, thanks. I wonder what the Bosch are doing over there now. I don't know. Do you like coffee better than tea? I do for breakfast. Do these bombs make much row? Not much. Personally, I prefer cocoa for breakfast. I'm sorry. Why sorry? Why shouldn't I have cocoa for breakfast? I don't mean that. I mean... Will the Bosch retaliate after the raid? Time has come, the war has said, to talk of many things. Of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings. And why the sea is boiling hot and where the pigs have wings. Now we're off. Quick, let's talk about pigs. Black pigs or white pigs? Black pigs. In the New Forest, you find them quite wild. You know the New Forest? Rather. My home's down that way, near Lyndhurst. I used to walk a lot around Lyndhurst. So did Dennis and I. I wish we'd known you then. You could have come with us. I wish I had. You must come and stay with us one day. I should like to awfully. I can show you places in the New Forest that no one knows about except Dennis and me. They say there are ruins of villages in the forest that William the Conqueror pulled down. I know. We often used to look for them. You must come and help look one day. I'll find them all right. Is it time yet? Two minutes, and then we must go up. I wish we had a good hot bath waiting for us when we got back. So do I. 
We're having something special for dinner, aren't we? Yes. We've had a fresh chicken sent up from Noel Farm. I say. And a most awful luxury. Two bottles of champagne and half a dozen cigars. One each and one spare one in case one explodes. <laughs> I've never smoked a cigar. It's bound to make you sick. I say, here's your ring. Yes, I know. I, I'm leaving it. I don't want the risk of losing it. Oh. I think we ought to get ready. Yes, righto. I'm not wearing a belt. Just the revolver with a lanyard round the neck. I feel better with this in my hand, don't you? Yes, something to hold on to. I hate leaving a pipe when it's got a good glow on the top like that. What a pity. I think we better go. Yes, righto. I'm glad it's you and I together, Rally. Are you really? Yes. So am I, awfully. We must put up a good show. Yes, rather. Let's go, shall we? Righto. Good luck, Mr. Osborne. Thank you. Good luck, Mr. Rally. the signal from here. Yes. Then over you go. I do. Make straight for that stump there. And wait for you. Keep as upright as you can, Rally, when you run in. So that if you get hit, it'll only get you in the legs. I see. Of course, they'll be firing blindly through smoke. Yes. Are your men ready? Yes. Half a minute. Stand by. Go. Good luck, Rally, boy. Come on, up.
Wann kommen Sie hier? Gestern Abend. Last night. Wo kommen Sie hier? Mein Geburtsort. What's that? You wish to know where I was born, huh? No. What town did you come up to the line from? I not tell you. Search him, Sergeant Major. Yes, sir. Looks like his playbook, sir. Good. Here, stop that. Lass mich. Let me please keep that. You let go. Looks like letters. These will be useful. Anything else, Sergeant Major? Just a few oddments, sir. A piece of string, some fruit drops. Pocket knife and a stub of pencil, sir. Let him have these back, except the pocket knife. Very good, sir. Here you are, Sonny. Thank you, Shane. All right, Sergeant Major. Take him straight back to my headquarters. Very good, sir. Come on, Fritz. Up you go. Come on, boys. Take him around with that feather. Lend it. Splendid, Stanhope. We got all we wanted. Brigadier will be very pleased about this. How awfully nice. If the Brigadier is pleased. What happened to the raiding party? Did they all come safely back? Did you expect them to be all safely back? What happened then? Four men and Raleigh came safely back. That means six men? And Osborne? Yes. I'm very sorry. Poor Osborne. Still, it would be awfully nice if the Brigadier is pleased. Pull yourself together, Stanhope. Do you know what happened to Osborne? Hand grenade. While he was waiting for Raleigh. And the six men? Machine gun bullet, I suppose. <laughs> splendid, Rally, splendid. Sit down and have a good rest. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> Must you sit on Osborne's bed? <laughs> Sorry. She ain't done that, she never will be. Dear Albert, give us a hand. All right. She's a bit springy in the legs, ain't she? She's a blinking toe dog. <laughs> Not in these trousers, in French. So I simply drew myself up and I said, very well, mademoiselle, have it your own way. And she did? No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll never forget picking up a couple of tarts one night and taking him out to dinner at Maidenhead. He's off again. <laughs> We drank enough bubbly to sink a battleship. Float a battleship. Well, uh, float a battleship then. <sighs> and then, if I didn't lose the way coming home, and those tarts began cursing me like hell said I'd done it on purpose. I told them if they didn't jolly well shut up, I'd chuck them out in the road and leave them. You know, you're the sort of man that makes girls hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a mother? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing yourself proud, aren't you, Mason? Thank you, sir. 
It's a good chicken, sir, except the legs. They seem a bit queer, sir. It's a spring chicken, isn't it, Mason? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> You stay aside of the legs, Stroller. I am, yes. Well, well here's a toast to the legs. God bless them. The legs. Right. Oh. I say, look, I've never shown you these, have I? Well, where on earth did you get these from? In Bethune. She's all right, isn't she? No, she's too fat. Isn't she, Stroller? Well, if you ask me, I'd rather have a decent picture of Margaret Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you don't understand art now. No. There's a nice pair of legs for you. Uh, <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, these are too thin, aren't they, Trevor? Scraggy, I calls them. <laughs> Mason. Yes, sir? Bring some whiskey. Very good, sir. What, whiskey on top of champagne? Oh, why not? It's all right. Sounds all wrong to me. <laughs> I feel as if I've been blown up with a bicycle pump. There's <laughs> <laughs> you look it too. <laughs> I'd like to tell you, sir, this is the last bottle. We brought six. I know, sir, but five's gone. Oh, never mind. This will last till sunrise. Sunrise tomorrow, my lads. Oh, forget that. You bet we will, Larry. Come on. Who's the swallow whiskey? Uh, yes, that's me. <clears throat> well, I'm about all full up. Mason. I'd like a decent cup of tea. Very good, sir. I've got a little touch of hoop. Palpitations. <coughs> tea? Then I'll go out and relieve young Rally. But he didn't come down to supper. Well, I told him to. Till he'd come down for now and let the sergeant major take over. I wonder why he didn't come. You know, that lad took in on his duty. Told me he liked being up there with the men better than down here with us. He said that. I reckon that raid shook him up more than we thought. Poor little bloke. He actually told you he preferred being up there with the men than down here with us. That's what he said. Well, I hope he gets the MC, that's all. The bridge. Do you think I want to talk about it? I know, but after all... Well, shut up then. Well, I know, but yeah, all right, all right. It's right. quite jolly if he started babbling about the war. I didn't start it. You did. You started well, it. Well, for God's sake, stop it then. All right, all right. Did I ever tell you the story about the girl I met in Soho? <coughs> I don't know. I expect you did. Well, it'll amuse you. I'd been to a dance, and I was coming home quite late. Yes, yeah, getting late uh, now. You go on duty at 11. You better go and get some sleep. It's all right. I'm as fresh as the daisy. I dare say you are. But go to bed. What? I said go to bed. Well, I say. This is a nice end to a jolly evening. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Well, you better go to bed. <laughs> what was that you said? Well, I was only joking. I asked you what you said. I said you better go to bed. Get out of here. What? For God's sake, get out of here. Why, what do you mean? Get out of my sight! What? The worm gets on my nerves. Poor little bloke. I've never seen him so cheerful out here before. Makes you sick. Now. Oh. You know, I envy you, Trollope. Nothing ever upsets you. You're always the same. Always the same, am I? How uh, little you know. Well, I'll go and relieve young Rally. He missed a good supper, he did. Why, he exhibits postcards. Funny a bloke carrying things like that about with him. Satisfies his lust, I suppose. Poor little bloke. Oh, well. 
well, I'll go up and cool off. It's hot down here with all them candles burning. Cheer out. Cheer up. There's a bit of mist rising. Is that? I thought I told you to come down to dinner at 8 o'clock. I'm sorry, I didn't think you were... Well, you didn't think I was. Well, I didn't think you'd mind if I didn't. Well, why did you think I asked you if I didn't mind? I'm sorry. Well, we've kept your dinner for you. It's here. I mean, it's awfully good of you to have kept it for me, but I had something to eat up there. You had something to eat up there? What do you mean, exactly? Well, they brought tea around while I was on duty. Are you telling me you've been feeding with the men? Well, they asked me to share. Now, look here. I know you're new to all this, but I thought at least you'd have the common sense to leave the men alone with their meals. Do you think they want an officer prowling around, eating their rations, sucking up them like that? Why did they ask me, then, if they didn't mean it? Don't you know that they were making a fool of you? Why should they? So you know more about my men than I do. I'm sorry, then, if I was wrong. Well, sit down. It's all right, thanks. Sit down! I understand that you prefer being up there, the men. I didn't say I, I lied! I'm not lying. Why should I lie? You insulted Trot and Hibber by not coming. You realize that, I suppose? I didn't mean to do anything like that. Well, you did. You know now, don't you? I say you know now, don't you? Yes, I'm sorry. My officers work together. I'll have no damn prigs. I didn't realize. Hmm. I'm glad you didn't realize. Well, what are you looking at? Is there anything funny about me? No. I'm awfully sorry, Dennis, if I annoyed you by coming into your company. What on earth are you talking about? You resent my being here. What do you mean? You better sit down and eat your dinner before it gets cold. I'm not hungry, thanks. Oh, for God's sake, sit down and eat it like a man. I can't eat it, thanks. How are you going to eat your dinner? Oh, good God, don't you understand? How can I eat that? When Osmond's lying out there. God, you bloody little swine. You think I don't care? You think you're the only soul that cares? And yet you can sit there and drink champagne and smoke cigars. The one man I could trust. My best friend. The one man I could talk to as man to man. Who understood everything. And you think I don't care? But how can you? To forget, you little fool. To forget. Don't you understand? To forget. Do you think there's no limit to what a man can bear? I'm awfully sorry, Dennis. I didn't understand. You don't know how I... Oh, go away, please. Please leave me alone. Can't I? Oh, get out! For God's sake, out! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, God. 
Napoleon on horseback, and what about it? Advance Napoleon on horseback, but tie your horse outside. Come on, you blokes. Right down both sides, to the support line. Good. I'll have a bit of trouble breaking through that job. You better get some sleep. What time is it? About four o'clock. Daylight in an hour. Think they'll attack this morning? I shouldn't wonder. Well then, we'd better get some sleep. There's most you chaps. Five, sir. All right. I was only half asleep. It's frightfully cold here. It's a cold dugout, this one, sir. I've made some hot tea, though. Good. You might bring me some, will you? Very good, sir. And take some into the other officers in there and wake them up. Very good, sir. Brush up, sir. I thought you were asleep. Oh, I had a nice sleep when I came off duty. What time is it? Half past five. Half past five. Sounds quiet enough up there. Yes. Hello, hello. Better call the others, Righto. Oh, that's what I want. A decent cup of tea. Half past five, sir. Oh, thanks, Mason. What? What time is it, Mason? Half past five, sir. I've made some more tea, sir. Oh, Lord. Mason. Yes, sir? As soon as you've cleared your kitchen, get dressed and join your platoon in the line. Very good, sir. If things are right by eleven o'clock, Come down and do your best to get us some lunch. I've got a packet of sandwiches for each gentleman, sir. Right. Right up. Yes, sir. Take this to battalion headquarters at once. No reply. Very good, sir. Da 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 but the guns are going hard down south. Every bombardment. Not sure it ain't creeping up here, sir. Very likely it is. The officers will be up in a minute. I've got to stay here for messages. But I'll be up as soon as things begin to happen. Very good, sir. Are the men having their tea? Yes, sir. Well, give them a good drop of rub. About half again, sir? Yes. If the attack don't come, sir, how long are we to stand to? We must expect this attack any time up till midday. Very good, sir. All right, thanks. All right, sir. Your sandwiches, sir. 
Half bully beef, half sardine. Sardine on top. Oh. How delicious. No petted foie gras? No what, sir? I say no petted foie gras? No, sir. The milkman hasn't been yet. All ready, Skipper. Want me to go up? Yes, better go up now. Have a look right round the line. Right now. And send a runner down. Let me know how things are going. Right out. Gibbert. Mallet. Do you want me to go up now? Yes. Trotter's gone. Right now. Cheer out, Dennis. Cheer out, Rally. Gibbert. in hurry, is there? You know, the longer you stay down here, the harder it'll be for you to go up. I'll go right along now, sir. All right, miss. Mr. Hibbert's going up now. You can go with him. I'd like to, if you don't mind, sir. I don't want to get lost. Mr. Hibbert will show you the way. Keep your men against the back wall of the trench as long as the shells are dropping behind. Cheer up. in the back, sir. Badly? Freddy's broke his spine, sir. He can't move his legs. 
Bring him down here. Down here, sir. Yes, down here, quickly. Very good, sir. when I picked him up, sir. Have they dressed the wound? I put a pad on it. Can't do no more, sir. Well, go at once. Bring two men with a stretcher. We'll never get him down with them shells falling on Lance's alley, sir. You hear what I say? Bring two men with a stretcher. Very good, sir. Dennis. Hello, Jimmy. You got one quickly. How did I get down here? The Sergeant Major brought you down. Something hit me in the back. Knocked me clean over. Sort of winded me. I, I'm all right now. Oh. Oh. Steady, old boy, steady. Just like quiet for a while. I'd be much better if I get up and walk about. It happened once before. I, I got kicked in the same place playing rugger. Soon wore off. Just numbs a bit. What's that rumbling noise? The guns are making a bit of a noise. Our guns? No, mostly theirs. I say, Dennis. Yes, Jimmy. It hasn't gone through, has it? It's only just hit me and knocked me down. Well, just gone through a bit, Jimmy. But I won't have to go on lying here. No. I'm going to have you taken away. Away? Where? To the dressing station, then the hospital, and then home. You've got a bloody one, Jimmy. But I... I... I can't go on lying here. Just for a knock in the back. I feel certain I'll be better if I get up. <gasps> oh. Oh. God, it does hurt. It's bound to hurt, Jimmy. What's on my legs? What's holding them down? It's all right, Jimmy. It's all right. Just the shock that's numb them a bit. That's all. It's awfully decent of you to bother, Dennis. That's all right. I feel rotten lying here. Everybody else up there. It isn't your fault, Jimmy. So damn silly getting hit. Is there just a drop of water? Sure. I've got some here. The tea leaves in it. Do you mind? Oh, that's all right, thanks. I say, Dennis. Yes, Jimmy. Don't you stay. If you have to be getting on. That's all right. Can you stay for a bit? Of course I can. Thanks awfully. I say, Dennis. Yes, Jimmy. Could we have a light? It's 
to fight the dark, cold. Sure. I'll get a candle and another blanket. Jimmy? 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 from Mr. Trotter, sir. Will you come at once? Mr. Trotter, sir, says, will you come at once? All right, Broughton. I'm coming. 